Said neighbor, neighbor, it's time to be planted. It's time to be planted. Come on, say neighbor, neighbor it's, time it's time to be planted. To be planted. Now I want to talk about amen, the planting, amen, uh, God's people working and being planted in God's house. Now the reason why I'm bringing this to you because, amen, uh, you know, anytime you want to grow anything, a, a fruit, a vegetable, a tree, um, you know, uh, flowers, it must be planted. Is that right? Amen. Uh, now, not to be disrespectful or to be rude, but when a man is planting a seed in a woman, she becomes impregnated. So planting has a lot. The Lord himself started out with planting things in life. And we must understand that, amen, when we um, sow seed, seeds are planted. When you give, it's planting. Are you listening? Do you not know when you pray, that's planting. So when I'm praying, I'm planting something for my future when I pray. So we need to learn that planting means a lot. Now I want you to look here a little bit further here. And we're going to learn the secret of really overcoming warfare by planting in prayer. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible even says here that when we um, sow in righteousness, we reap in mercy. So that when we sow that in righteousness, you start seeking God and find out. Because remember again, you are on this earth for, with a purpose. Amen. Everyone must know this. When God born you on this earth, it was born for purpose. Amen? Now, it is our job to seek out, why am I here on this earth? What is God's intention for my life? Is that right? Now, understand my point. You can actually live a life that just living, just in the atmosphere. Nothing is happening. Nothing is changing because you're not planting yourself to grow to find out what flower you are. There's a flower as a sweet pea. There's a flower that's a carnation. There's a flower that's a rose. There's a, come on, so there's different planting. You need to know who you are. So when that seed go into the ground, the seed comes up with his own identity. That seed goes in the ground and becomes, if it's a, if it's a rose, it goes in the ground as a rose seed, it comes up as a rose. If it's a carnation or whatever, etc., it goes on. So we have to understand, when you plant yourself, what are you coming up to identify who you are. There must be identification. Remember here again, the truth about life is this, no one really can hold you back. The truth is we attach ourselves to a lot of vines that chokes us. So you're the flower, but if you don't unwrap yourself from that vine that's trying to crawl up the tree to choke out the life, guess what? If you don't cut it from the root, it will kill the destiny of that flower. And so that means, amen, it tells us here, now I'm going to give you a demonstration on this this morning. I think you have that, amen, uh, just a moment. I'm going to show you a demonstration on what, what happened the other day. I was in my yard. I'm going to show you something I did the other day that God showed me what I need to do. Amen. I'm going to share that with you. Is that right? But notice here, amen, let's go to Psalms, if you would, Psalms 92. And in Psalms 92, it is very important to understand this here because, again, everyone here has something to do on this earth. Everyone. And you know, it's fun, funny how people can find, you know, now wait a minute. Um, there are people who are blind. So there was someone who purposed and found brails. Is it braille? And they found out how you can use braille to read, correct? So that means someone discovered their purpose to help those who are blind. Amen. See, 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 people need to find out, amen, the, the reason why we got lights, because someone discovered there was a light, there's electricity in the atmosphere. Amen, amen. Uh, someone discovered, amen, uh, I think they said the Ford brothers, how to um, uh, 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 get a car going. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then the Wright brothers, how to fly an airplane. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you understand my point, when they were probably doing all those things, people were laughing at them. Oh, you think you can make a plane fly, right, brothers? Or you think you can a, a, a car can drive? We, know we, use, we can use a bicycle. We learn about bikes. But you got a motor that moves a car. It came to fruition. Amen. Because we must understand that when God gives you a dream or vision or purpose, you're not to let it die. Amen. And what we do, the problem is with the church, we let vision die 
because we wait for people to push us forward and sometimes they don't have the power and sometimes people don't have the right spirit or the right attitude to help you push forward. Amen. And you're waiting long, long, long for nothing. Push yourself. Amen. Turn and say, I got to push myself. If you don't push yourself, now watch it here. The Bible says here, here's a secret that's going to bless you. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 92 and verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Who's that promise to? Those that what? Be planted. planted. See, you got to be planted. Yeah. See, remember, it, listen. Now, if I have a seed in my hand and I put the seed on this, 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 this pulpit right here, this lid right there, this podium, it's not going to help this. You know what? It's not planted. It's sitting here with all the attributes, all the anointing, everything I need is in that seed. Yeah. But guess what? It's in the wrong place. And when things are out of place, you are still a seed, but you just don't grow. Can't get no amens. Amen. Well, uh, I mean, see, see it, it must be planted on, number one, good soil, right soil, and good earth. Because you, you can't plant it, well, as long as I plant it, no, you cannot plant a seed in the sand and get the same results as dirt. Listen like right now, assignment is important. People don't understand. See, when God assigned you to something, you better keep your assignment. You know why? Because when you pluck yourself out, you'll be in somebody, I just can't move forward. You know why I can't move forward? Because you ain't assigned. As humans, we are assigned on this earth to breathe air. Our assignment is I cannot live in water. I can stay in water for a while. I can have a tank and breathe. But guess what? Even if I have a tank and I stay in the water for a while, I'm still breathing what I need, air. Amen. Ain't no mermaids up in here. <laughs> so what happens, the assignment of sea, uh, uh, sea creatures, the assignment is water. The whale, the fish, the shark. Come on here. Some even the turtles can, then some have a dual nature. A turtle can go in and come back out. An alligator can go in and come back out. See, they have dual natures. So their assignment is dual, but our assignment is single. We cannot live in water because, you know, we are assigned to the air. God breathed into man the breath of the life. Man became a living soul. Let everything that have praise you, Lord. So when you breathe, every time you breathe it, you bring what God has given you. And then the fish are breathing what God give, they gave them. He said, now he created creatures of the sea. And he let them breathe into the waters. Simon. I cannot get mad at the fish because of their assignment. And if I want to get mad at the fish because of their assignment, let me get in the water and take over. And watch me drown. Whenever you try to take over someone's assignment and you ain't assigned to do it, you're drowning in assignment. You'll kill yourself off because you ain't assigned to do what they can do. Come on, talk to me. That's why I got news for you. Never get angry or jealous over what somebody's assignment because you don't know what they got to do or what they got to face in that assignment. I want to be a fish. Well, guess what? There's a shark coming to look for you. And you, don't, you can't handle that assignment. Amen, somebody. See? So, but those that be planted, here's how the church can understand, how can I prosper? How can I get blessed by God? God is telling us a simple plan. If you are planted in the house of the Lord, you're going to flourish. I'm going to use you as a seed to flourish. Now, and when you flourish, you, some of you right now will come up a beautiful flower, and some of you will come up a beautiful harvest. Because you're on assignment. And whatever God has, amen, for you is going to take place because you've been planted in the house of the Lord. Now, when let's talk about this here. Not planted around the house. Not planted on top of the house. Not planted close to the house. Planted in the house of the Lord. 
You know the old saying, you got to be in it to. So guess what? If you ain't in it, you can't win it. He said you got to be planted in the house of the Lord. Now, wait, wait, let's, now let's break down our fleshly, because the Lord began to deal with me on certain things. We have so many carnal things we put before God. And we want God's blessing, but you got to do it God's way. You, you know, understand my point. Everybody wants you to understand them. But you can't go before judgment seat to God and tell my Lord, you have to understand, you know, I, I had a thousand things. I, I just can't serve you right now. I got so many things I'm doing. No, 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 no. Who have given you the breath of life? Your job don't give breath. Come on here. Your money don't give you breath. Stores don't give you breath. Come on, people don't give you breath. God breathed into you the breath of life. And we're looking for everyone's approval. And we're trying to please everybody. And it's funny how sometimes, this is going to be important when I say this here, family is always first. But sometimes family gets in the way. Wow. wow. Oh, I got to go. Family. I'm, I'm taking off 25. I'm going to be in church for 17 months because I got to go to my family. No, 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 no. And the same family that turns against you, you sit in church by yourself tomorrow. Me and my family are getting along. Amen. Pray for me for I'm going to kill Billy and Pook and, and, Pook and, Pook and them. Because you're angry with the family. See, we got to put God first. Because when you put God first, God will put everything in check with the family. God is important above everything. Now, it's kind of strange to say, it's above our marriage. It's above our job. It's above, amen, uh, uh, what you want to do for your own self. God is first. Let's deal with the reality. Who woke you up this morning for real? Not your alarm clock. Because Elder was saying a long, long time ago, you could put an alarm clock in the mortuary and see who get up. See, when God breathed into you, you got to take it serious. That's why today God has to do a shaking to awaken us. Don't you know we were out here breathing without no mask on? We was enjoying life. We was walking around, hanging out. We didn't think about cover your mouth, cover your mouth, cover, put a mask on. We didn't think about that. But now we look in God and some of you can't even breathe in it. Come on here. Because you know why? God didn't make you to live with a mask. But of course, we have to use it because of the virus. But you ain't really called to live with a mask. He breathed into you without a mask. Amen. God ain't wearing no mask in heaven. But what I'm trying to say, and I'm not talking against the mask. I'm just saying that look how we have to depend on God for what we're going through right now. People who didn't believe Elder is believing now. Because when they said, I'm, I, I, I can't breathe, I have respiratory problem, and all of a sudden they had to go to God and they prayed and they got some answers. Start feeling better. Start getting a healing and recognize that God and Jesus, he is Lord. I need to be planted in God's house. And the next thing here, I'm going to talk about here, amen. See, remember again, when you plant it, see, you got to get away from people who don't understand the things of God. Go to uh, uh, 2 Thess Thessalonians 3 and 6. See, you got to withdraw yourself from certain people who's blocking your blessing. Get, i got to say this. People will block your blessing. If you don't stay around some people that's going to block your blessing, you're going to hurt yourself for your future. Because you're going to get angry and say, how many years I've wasted this person blocking my blessing. They didn't love God. They didn't serve God. You've got, you know, you got to be in tune. Now, the Bible says here, now we command you. Now, this is the word. This is God's word. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves. We ain't going to like this one. From every brother that walketh disorderly. And have not received, or have not, uh, after, or put it this way, let me say it clear, make it clear. Withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and have not after the tradition which he have received of us. So that means when Paul was preaching the gospel and teaching, he said there were some folk who were walking disorderly. Don't hang with them, withdraw yourself from them. 
Because you know why? Amen. Th their disorder brings a disorder in your life. Let me tell you something here. Y'all know good and well, and this is going to be kind of rude when I say this, but it's true. When a toilet is out of order, it can cause a whole lot of mess. Come on, talk to me. They, it'll cause a whole, and when people's lives are disordered, they'll make your life messy. Yeah. Y'all been around people like that. You had things together, you got into the involved with them, and all of a sudden your life starts going down. Yeah. Everything is messed up. You know, so no more money, no more, come on, no more peace. Yeah. You ever let somebody stay in your house, and all of a sudden now, when you used to sleep at night, you can't sleep anymore? Amen. They play loud music yeah. at the wrong time. Come on here. They, they just, all this, you know, stuff going on and what, and it's just a whole lot of stuff smoking up the house and everything. And you didn't have that before. Now you sneezing. Now you got allergies. Amen. So you, you, you got to remember here, withdraw yourself from people that's making you disorderly. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes people are going to despise you because they think you think you're better than them. It's not that. You got to withdraw yourself from mess. That's all to it. Because if not, you're going to be messy and messed up and depressed. You never had depression until you got with them. You never was nervous. You never had anxiety. But when you hung out with the wrong people, they were number sand. You can't plant in sand. You got to plant in dirt, good soil. And sometimes, I'm going to say here now, if you are good soil, anyone that's come in your life should make sure they are planted with you because you're good soil. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They can't come with nothing. And, number seven, and they got to come with the right seed if they're going to plant because they can't come with the plastic stuff. <laughs> Amen. There was an old song back in the day, some people are made of plastic. You know. <laughs> I'm going to get my group to come back here one week. Some people are made of wood. I'm just saying that. See, let me tell you, you don't want, you, you need, pe listen, it's time now. We have so many problems. We don't need no more plastic people around us. How many know you've been around enough phone needs already? You don't need no more, amen. You got 99 problems, you need another one. So now, you, you remember here that he said here, we command you because I want to see you planted. Because, see, you got to enjoy yourself. Because, see, that's why sometimes people don't know why people walk out of churches. You know why? Because it's somebody who's, they're vacuum withdrawing you. They're pulling you out. How do you think we are in this predicament of sin? The devil got into Eve's mind. What happened to Eve is this. Eve... First of all, the Bible says here, what is in life? The lust of the eye, pride of life, and et cetera like that, right? So what happened? When the devil saw her in the book of uh, uh, Genesis 3, you can see that Genesis 3 for a minute. And when the devil saw Eve, he made her see things that she didn't need to see. You know, you ever know, so I can tell, I can tell, let me tell something. Oh, it's going to be deep now. I can tell when folk change their personality because when I see people loving the Lord and praising God and they start to sit around certain people and all of a sudden their countenance change, I know that person be talking. I can tell when some people, children, come up here and they look at me strange, I know your mom and dad have been talking. Because when they should see me, they bitch up the smile, now they look like, like, They've been talking about you, Bishop. I know they're going to tell. They're going to tell Professor. Wait till your sons and daughters become preachers. Yeah, my mama talked about my bishop, but my mama's a liar. Yeah. Let me go here. Genesis 3. Watch this here. Now, now watch this here. Go over here. When the devil was talking to Eve in verse 4, he said, And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, you shall be as God's known good and evil. Now watch this here. What do he do? The lust of, of, of the, 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 the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh. 
And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, you know what the devil did? He made her lust in her appetite. She started lusting on, in her appetite. And then it says here, and, and, and it was pleasant to the eyes. Then he put lust in her eyes. See how the devil operates? He'll, first he'll make your appetite want something. Then he'll make you see clearly, it looks real good now, to fall, make you fall back. And when she saw all that, and, and, and then she said, and it was a tree desired. See, look at that. Now I desire, I'm lusting after this thing. Because remember, lust is really desire. Lust is not sex. You can be lustful with sex, but you, lust can be food. Amen? Lust could be, you know, uh, uh, you know, wanting what somebody want or have or something. Lust could go in different areas. It's not about sex. But notice here, she saw lusting in her eyes. She had an appetite of lust. And she had also a, a desire. Got into her, her spirit man to make one wise. And what happened? And she took of the fruit thereof, did eat. Because you know what? Lust took her over. Lust can, lust can mess you up. People in the world, you know why people in the world? Because they lust for the things of the world. Amen? Amen. Now that's what I'm telling you. Y'all got to eat it. Let's go further here. See, he said, withdraw yourself from everyone who walks disorderly. See, that's taken from the Greek word, um, atechio. Atechio. Atechio means a person who's insubordinate or someone who's disrespectful. A takeo. You, you got to get around from people who are insupporting. Listen, remember, you know some folk ain't got no job today. You know why? They're insupporting to the rule. You, and when you have a supervisor over you, whether they are white, black, you don't like them or no, they don't make it. You are under them. And you got to obey the rule. And when you stand up to a supervisor, you are insubordinate. You are disrespectful. And you ain't got no job. Then you go out tomorrow, and you know, I got to say this, I'm, the Holy Ghost is on me, because I'm saying, then people always tell their side of the story. Let's talk about your insubordination. Let's talk about your disrespect. Let's not talk, see, you want, and, and they, they're trying to make me do all the work. No, that's, you know, they, I'm going to tell you why they're trying to make you do all the work. Ask me why. Because you asked for a job. Now, we said we have no work, we can't hire you. They won't hire me. But now you got it. So understand my point. Sometimes it is. I told one little girl I was in the store one time, and she was so angry. And I said, you know, I said, you know, she had a long line. And it, it, she, listen, sometimes people are wrong, too. I'm not saying everybody who's over you is right, because they can do some dirty stuff. They make you do everything. So what happened, this girl had a long line, and everybody was walking around the store. And, 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 but I, I encouraged her. I said, sweetheart. She said, you know what? No one's going to help me open up another cash register. I said, you know what? I know you're right. I said, because I see them walking around, and I asked the lady, can y'all, somebody sit here? They said, we're doing some tagging, right? They were doing some tagging. It was important. They could have waited for the tagging, clear up the line, and go back to the tagging. So what happened is, I encouraged her, I said, sweetheart, don't get frustrated, because you know why? At least you got a job. Because you could be in the line with me. <laughs> Amen. Waiting in line to pay for an item, but at least you got a job. I said, so hold on. She said, you know, that makes sense. You're right. I, yeah, dude, I did need a job. I got one. But these folks get on my nerves up here. I said, just calm your nerves then. <laughs> Let me show you here. So when, in, now let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. In Ch Ephesians 6, chapter 6. Because I want to talk about here, this is important that we understand, church. We got to be planted. But in planting, remember here, because when Paul said withdraw yourself, sometimes you got to withdraw anything that's not working in order. If your seed is in sand, remove that seed. If your seed is around this, the earth sitting on the street, remove that. Because you know why? That earth is going to scorch my seed up. You know, the ground can get so hot that it'll take a seed and make it a shell. It'll burn out the elements. Because you know, that's why you know something. When they throw seeds down, some seeds never go in. It becomes later a shell and empty. Because you know why? And you get a chance to get into the dirt. I want you to get, listen, I want you to get in God's will. I want you to get planted in the church. I want you to start putting everything is secondary. 
Everything is secondary. If you think about life, everything behind us is secondary. God is first. God is first in everything. That's why, I'm going to go further. That's why he won a tenth of what you have. You got tithes. You're supposed to God give God a tenth. It's written from the beginning of time. God won a tenth. So say that God wants a tenth. You will curse yourself if you don't pay it a tenth. Now, you can hold on to it. You think you're going to build up? It's going to come from you. Watch, it's going to skip from money. You're going to die. Everything you build up is going to be taken in one sway. Because God don't play with the tenth. Amen. Read your Bible. I'll show you from Genesis that God won in a tenth. What do you mean from Genesis? We, we, you know what Genesis? God said every tree you can eat 90%, but don't touch this tenth, that one tree. Is dedicated to me. That's mine. You touch that, you're cursed with a curse. God help y'all miss that right there. They talk about Melchizedek. What about when God said in Genesis about don't touch that one tree? That was a tenth right there. Then we go to Melchizedek when Abraham paid tithes unto Melchizedek. Then another thing, then what happened is, here's another tip. God gave everything to Israel. He told him, listen, the walls of Jericho is coming, to, going to tum, come tumbling down, and what's going to happen, everything there will be consecrated unto the Lord for right now. Yes. You, it's your, all your gold and silver, but let me consecrate it first. Achan takes a tenth himself. He only didn't take the whole thing. He took a little bit. Yeah. And God says, hold up. The camp is held up. Well, what happened? Sin is in the camp. Someone has taken God's stuff and put it among their own stuff. Therefore, you cannot fight against your enemies. You got to run from them. Read Genesis. See, people don't understand here. We, we talk about, amen, or oh, uh, I don't about the tenth. You know the tenth is holy. Then God said in Malachi, you have robbed me this whole nation. Why would God say here, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house? When did we stop bringing meat in God's house? Wow. Mm. When did we stop bringing meat in God's house? When did God say here, we got enough provision, stop tithing? He never said that. He said, prove me now. He never said it's over. Book of Matthew, he said, you pay tithes. He was rebuking the Pharisees or whatever. And he said, you pay tithes in men, but you ain't giving God the glory somewhere. But he was talking about tithes still. So we want to be blessed. We got to release the, the seed that blesses us. Amen. amen. When God said here in his word, amen, um, uh, present your bodies, but renew your mind. What's bigger, your, your head or your body? No, no, no. What's bigger? No, no the physically, physically. When you look at, I hope your head ain't bigger than your body because it's going to look kind of funny up in here. But, your head is 10%. And he says, this 10% can change the whole 90%. God help us. If you renew your mind, your body is renewed. Your spirit is renewed. Because a 10%, if I can talk to this, I can get that. Are you listening? See, I'm just saying that that's why people don't know the 10th is holy unto God. You understand, but I need the whole, no, 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 read on, I'm giving you some scripture here. And it's called tools. Somebody say tools. When I give you these tools, you have no way to get out of your malicious acts. Or where you, where I'm, I'm trying to, you can look up every scripture you want. You'll find through, through different symbols, God always took a tenth from something. Amen? When Noah and his family left the earth, he took a tenth. And the whole nation was destroyed. The tenth was his family. They were holy. They got on the ark. 90% died. Because they wouldn't get on the ark. Lord help us. All through the scripture you'll find God wants a portion to bless you with a harvest. Hallelujah. Mm. Ooh, I feel God up in here. Now, now, where am I? So, so now, well, that's what I said here before. Amen. He, the woman saw these things, and it's a, it got, got in her mind. And you know what he did? He blinded her mind so she could lose everything. See, it got into her mind and her appetite, and she saw, and everything fell. If she had kept the tenth holy, she'd have been eating right now. 
without labor. We'll be blessed right now. There'll be no death. You know, listen, did I tell you before? In Genesis 1, there was no such thing as prayer. You know when prayer came in? After Genesis 3. Why do you have to pray when there's nothing to pray for? Lord, send the rain. For what? It's rain there. The crops watered itself. You'd have to labor. It was no need for prayer. Praise, yes. Glorifying God, yes. That's okay. But prayer, there was no need for prayer. What you praying for? Lord, deliver us from evil. That prayer wasn't even needed. Amen. It was no evil. Amen. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Yes. So watch this here. Now, now, now I'm going to close. Watch this here. So, so I want you to see this here. Now, it, it, and God showed me, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 and go to verse, t- uh, um, verse 12. I said before, there's a wrestling, there's a fight, there's a war, but you got to know how to stand. Yes. Having done all to stand, you got to do everything to stand in this evil day. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If you want to be rooted in the things of God, you got to start wrestling in your flesh and blood. You got to start doing God's way. Because you know what I found out? When you start doing things in your flesh, you always fail. Everything I did in my flesh, I fail. But if I do in the spirit, I win. Because the flesh flesh really wants to be the rule. But you know what the whole thing is? We got to bring that flesh under subjection. You got to bring, you got to, see, the only way you can bring your flesh under subjection is through the anointing of prayer. Prayer has to be empowered in your spirit, and you have to destroy the flesh wants and make the flesh listen to you. There's two types of dogs, one trained and one untrained. And if you train a dog, he'll know exactly what to do. Some dogs are so smart, they'll bring you a newspaper. And in some of you right now, you may have a mutt. He don't bring you nothing. Because you know why? You never trained him. If you train, never train a dog, I mean, he knows what to do. You know, just like, you know, it, it comes a time that you train children. You know, how many know that when your child was a little baby, and then comes a the time they go to the potty? Do you remember, any of y'all have children? You remember we had to take the pacifier from them? They had a fever after that. But that's all right. You had to keep breaking it until they give up that pacifier. And then some use a substitute and start sucking on their thumb and all that. So, you know, you know how the kids are. They're going to find a way. I remember when I was a kid, I used to suck these two fingers right here. I'd do all like this all day long. So I, was, I used to live in Chicago. My aunt one day, I'll never forget this. I was five years old. She took my fingers out my mouth. I, I know she put my fingers out my mouth that, that, mor- that morning. And she took some hot sauce and dipped my fingers and put it back in my mouth. I thought she was so kind. I said, thank you. Hello. And I stopped, you know, on the fingers. Because <laughs> when I felt that, I, I told her she's going to do it again. I was scared of that aunt. To this day, she died. I'm still scared of her. <laughs> Let me go on further. Watch this. So now, uh, if you look over in our last scripture, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So when I had this here, let me, I had a, a, a paper here. Uh, let me have the flower. And I'm going to show you something here. Um, I was in the garden, right? And in this garden around next to my house was like a little planted garden. There was, I was trying to get some things up. I have, do I have some scissors there? I'm gonna show you what, I, what happened to me. I was doing something and um, I need somebody who's strong to pull these rubber bands off here. Okay. So I, I had this and I, I said, you know what? I didn't like what was happening because there was some, um, I don't want this is real tight. Now, so I was trying to pull, there was weeds among some beautiful flowers. And these weeds had thorns. I think you can see this here. They can say these are thorns, right? So what I did, I said, I need to remove these bad thorns before it wraps itself around these beautiful flowers. And what I did, I grabbed the thorn, because I, I used to know how to do it, grab it from the root. And I grabbed it from the root. And when I grabbed it from the root, I pulled it up. And guess what happened? I cut my finger open. And I said, my goodness. I said, Lord. I said, man, that thing hurts. I said, I did it before. And so I said, I'm going to try it one more time. So I went around another area and tried to pull up, and a thorn hit me again. Boom. And more blood started coming out. And God spoke to me and said, you know why? Because you are trying to do things in your flesh. 
but you need to use the tools I gave you. See, see, we, we've been trying to do things in the flesh. That's why we're still bleeding. But we have a tool. We don't want to use a tool. We want to go in our flesh and do it. I, I don't care what no one say. I'm going to do it my way. No, and you know what? You keep bleeding. And God says, here, see, the reason why you're messing up, because you're doing things in your flesh. But use your tool. And here's the tool right here. All I had to do was snip it, clip it, and it was done. But any, then God showed me something. Anytime you use your flesh, you hurt yourself. You wrestle not against flesh and blood. You wrestle, there's some, some spirits that's out behind this. It uses the flesh, but there's a spirit behind it. And I was determined, I'm just going to get this thing up one way or another with my hand. And God says here, that's the problem with the church. They're doing things in the flesh. They're not using the tool of my word. All you have to do is use the tool. What did God say in his word? No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. What did God say? I will supply all of your needs according to my riches. What did God say here? By his stripes you are healed. What did God say here? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and by it the elders obtain a good report. You got to believe God in this hour, church. Listen, let me explain to you. It's no sense in coming to serve God in the church if God ain't real. Why waste time? I told someone the other day, I said, listen, he said, well, how you know it's a heaven? I don't want to die to find out if it's, 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 it's come on, if you, you want to wait till you find out? I know it's a heaven. First of all, it's all through the scripture. And secondly, too many people have revelations. Paul said here, through the abundance of revelation that was given to me, he said, I've seen things that it cannot be uttered with the wrong your own voice. He said, but a message of Satan came to buffet me, which means to strike me, to hit me, to, so I can be under subjection because of the abundance I received from God. He said, you see, because what happened, Paul knew his purpose. The devil gave him a purpose to take out every Christian. And God said, that's not your real purpose. I'm going to show you who you are. And when Paul submitted and planted himself with God, he became one of the chief apostles that's written in the Bible today. Turn in and say, find your purpose. Be planted in the house of the Lord. If you're not planted, you'll always be a surface person. Let me tell you, don't be a surface saint. You know, you know why they call surfboards surf surfboards? Because it's on the surf hit surface. See, it's not a deep water. You know, why do you think they call submarines? Submarines because sub means going under. See? See, they got named for certain things. Why do you think they make bumblebees? Because they want to give you some honey. <laughs> that was just off the, off the chart. So well, that's it. So then we go further. So now we got to understand here, in closing, stop trying to do things in the flesh. Use the tools of God. When the devil come your way, you say, no way. See, listen, if you're feeling sick, by his stripes I'm healed. The devil fighting your warfare, no weapon form against me is going to prosper. Start speaking this into the atmosphere. Because words have power. Some of you right now, I just ain't got no money, I'm broke. I am blessed by God, I'm rich in Jesus' name. The Lord wants me to prosper. Say this, the Lord wants me to prosper. Be in health, even as my soul prospereth. That's what God wants you to be. You got to start declaring, God, you said you want me to prosper, be in health. The devil trying to fight my help? I'm in health. Amen. My soul, that means your mind should prosper. Come on, somebody. Are you listening? And listen, the Lord said this word, Evangelist. He said, he shall supply all his rich, oh, no, supply all your needs according to his what? So if he's rich, how many know we need a rich father? He, he didn't say according to my poverty. He's according to his riches. So watch this here. When the prodigal son uprooted himself from the planted home he had. Mm. Remember the prodigal son? He was rooted in that house with everything he needed. But you know, I believe this here, this is my scenario of the story. People were talking to him, won't you get your inheritance and jet out of here? Get your stuff now. It's a time that children got to leave your house, but it got to be the proper time. Y'all got quiet. You go ahead of time, you mess up. He went prematurely. See, when a baby is in premature stages, no matter how much the baby come out of six months, 
it'll stay in that premature, premature, uh, premature uh, uh, incubator for another three months until it gains its weight. So even though it's out, it's still got the weight. So you got to be careful. If you do things ahead of time, you're only hurting yourself because you're still going to wait for your timing. Woo, glory to God. Amen. You, 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 so you got to learn how to wait on certain things. And I was saying something. What I was saying about that? Um, I said my mind. I was just talking about a story just now. Anybody remember? So everybody got short-term memory. Okay. Everybody's messed. Okay. We're all in the same boat. But here's the thing. So when you plant it, though, I'm saying that, see, once you plant, the next thing is in planting, wait on God. Don't be impatient. Well, I gave a seed. Where's my seed? I planted it. See, wait on God. See, because the devil won't make you impatient. Like the devil tried to fool Eve and said, God's going to hold something back from you. So she got discouraged. Sometimes the devil tell you, you've been waiting all this time. Where's your blessing? Your blessing is coming. is in God's timing. Amen. God knows timing for some reason. Why God do things? Some, let me say something. There's some things you'll never get an answer from. You'll never know until you go to heaven. There's some things that God do and you have no answer. Have anybody been there? I, got, I mean, I, I go to God about some things. I said, God, I don't understand why. Thus, thus, and thus. I just can't understand it. But there's no answer. He'll tell me everything else is said what I need to know. <laughs> Somebody, you know this, you know that. And I said, but, I said, but God, what about this here? And he's quiet. But then again, that's how professors are. When you, t- you as a teacher, you, 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 you know, when you do tests, you walk in the aisle and they're taking the test, but you don't talk to the students. You just walk and look at them. See what they're doing. See if they're cheating. Huh? See if they got an earphone on. See, now today, y'all, so, y'all, man, y'all should become lawyers by now because y'all could do all kind of mechanisms. You could put it in your hair and you hear your voices. Your test be like, all right, what is uh, number seven on page 486? Something's in your head. They never see it's in your head. They're like, you know, come on here. Why do you think most of y'all got degrees? Online. Online. <laughs> this joking. So listen, quickly, amen, but here's the thing. I want you to see this here. I want the church to be planted because, again, the earth is calling for the planting. That's why God said here, those that be planted is going to flourish. Get to the place of planting yourself so you start flourishing. Stop walking around here trying to be on top of the dirt, around the dirt. Get in the dirt. Amen, Amen, somebody. Listen, the reason why Naaman got healed because when they told him to go to the dirtiest river, he got in the water. He didn't sit around the pool. You know what happened to the man who sat around the pool? He stayed there for over, th- probably no doubt, 30 something years. They said, how long have you been in this case? He said, for 30 or 38 years? And he said, because every time I get ready to go in, someone gets in before I get there. So he sat around the pool because he knew someone's going to beat him to it. The man at the gate called beautiful, he sat around the gate called beautiful. But when he got healed, he got into the gate. Some of you got to get in this, this, this walk with God. In getting, I'm going to structure my life. I'm, listen, and let me tell you I'm removing everything on Sunday morning worship. Whatever is in my way. Yo, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use that day. That's, I'm sorry. Well, they're going on the picnic. Well, I'll see you after the picnic, especially when it's at Prospect Park. I walk there after the dark. Come on here, talk to me. After service, I was going to walk on down there. If it's out of state, that's understandable. One time around the corner, you'll be like, oh, I got to go to Central Park now. No, they slow down. You can get there after service. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Amen. Like the chicken going to run. No. The fried chicken will be there. Amen. I'm just saying that be planted. Yeah. Be planted. Somebody say be planted. Amen. So I can flourish. Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, plant me Amen. so I can flourish and have good success in Jesus name. Clap your hands for the Lord everyone. So is it my we close our broadcast, we'd like to give those an opportunity that have not accepted Christ as your savior to do so on today. It's a simple prayer taken from the scriptures Romans 10 and 9. And for those of you who would like to receive Christ in your life today, just repeat after me. Say, dear God, Come into my heart. I do believe that Christ died and rose again to give me a new life. 
I receive him in my heart today as Lord and Savior to reign and rule in my life now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So glad that you were able to join us on today. We really hope that this word has resonated with you and that you come back next week to enjoy another word or watch online with a friend as well. And again, make sure that you are sharing this link with someone that you feel like needs to hear it. We'll see you next week.